You know, we always talk about flowering shrubs and flowering plants. In this segment, we're going to talk about them another way, that these plants flower, but they're not known for the flower. What they're known for are their berries and the, the brilliant colors of berries and that they get them in the fall um, and that we're going to basically rattle off a bunch of different varieties and that, Aaron, you're going to have on the, uh, the pictures of these plants on the YouTube channel. So again, please subscribe to Bloomer's YouTube channel and you'll be able to get this uh, information and see them. Uh, unfortunately, we have our podcast and, and radio. It's kind of hard, but see, try to use your imagination. Uh, Calicarpa is our first one. Calicarpa right. is also known as beautyberry. Uh, Julio, how, how would you describe beautyberry? Gosh, you know, th- this is a beautiful plant to have. It's like a lavender, b- purplish, purplish, yeah, lavender, purplish, probably more purple. Right. It's like deep. It's and they're deep. like little clusters of berries Berry. that that basically form along, along the stem, stem. Yeah, that's awesome. and that they're they're glossy. I mean, they look yeah. like they've been sprayed with varnish or, or a cover a clear coat because they are they are glossy and they almost they almost reflect the sun and that they are a tremendous tremendous plan we use them also at christmas time oh, that yeah. we'll put them uh in wreaths and and in uh, different decorations of fresh plant material you can do the same thing uh the berries do get eaten by the birds, so keep that in mind and that you're doing something good for the birds. Yeah. But their glossy color is just so intense. Right. Their flowers are boring. They're a little white flower that, that's pretty insignificant, but it's the purple berry is like outrageous. Yeah. Where outrageous. else do you see a plant like that? All right. Like purple. <laughs> well, that's, and again, that's right. It's the yeah. purpleness that, that makes it so amazing. All right. Orange. Orange, you glad to see me? Uh, Pyracantha, also known as Firethorn. There are different types of Pyracantha. Uh, They are called Firethorn for a reason because they have thorns. Um, They are a beautiful white. They get covered in white flowers, but their berries are generally an orange or an orangey red. And there are different varieties and sizes where there's some that can grow uh, as big as... Oh, gosh. I think I've seen them as big as like eight feet. But uh, they're often used in areas of high crime, to be honest with you. They, <laughs> yeah. they, they're they intimidating because, uh, like, you know, you don't want to go through these, you know, one to two inch thorny oh. plants. But, my gosh, the berries that come on them, it, it's a beautiful color. Uh, have you been to a Republic Bank, Julio? You've been by one, at least. I yeah, know. I've been by one. And Republic Bank is a, is a, you know a big bank that uh, actually was just bought by Fulton Bank. That's my bank. That's your bank. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> go Fulton. Uh, but Republic Bank has these in a uh, where they're topiary, where they're actually in a crisscross pattern in their drive-throughs. Oh, wow. that's well, that's what I said. Oh wow! I mean, that's. They're beautiful. So they, you also will see them on a trellis. You'll see them straight up as a column. But the, a lot of times, if you're not doing due diligence with keeping them trimmed, they're going to end up growing back into the bush. So, you know, unless you're dedicated to keeping them that shape, then, you know, just get the regular bush. It'd save you some money. But the orange color is like true pumpkin fall orange it just screams it it's autumn and it's just a tremendous plant and that you do get an excellent excellent flower white white flower that basically covers the plant and everywhere that those flower tiny flowers are there becomes a a fairly large berry probably quarter maybe maybe three eighths of an inch Uh, very pretty very pretty and the birds love it it. what's the next one who Ilex verticillata. It's uh, called uh, winterberry holly. Winterberry holly. Yep. It is very common. Oh, yeah. You, it, it is a native. You'll see winterberry holly all through wooded areas throughout our listening area. Uh, they have new varieties uh, that are not only orange, but it almost has a blush, almost like a peach color, peach color to them. 
Um, I still like the red. Oh, There's yeah. nothing better than seeing a winterberry holly in the snow. Oh. The white background with the intense red uh, be berries cool. is just is just beautiful. Stunning. And there are different varieties. Now, one thing we talked about birds and the bees all the time, and the winterberry holly. They need a pollinator, so you need to have. Uh, first of all, you need to have a male pollinate the female, and the female gets the berries. Okay. Now, some nurseries are very smart, and I think that uh, I think Centerton Nursery does it. Uh, Monrovia Nursery does it. Well, they'll plant in the same pot a male and female, so that there's the pollinator is right with it. Not always, but you'll you know check to it to go to you'll find this you're not going to find this at depot or lowe's or anything like that go to your local garden center that they may have that in stock otherwise you need to like there's a variety called gentleman jim i don't know what kind of gentleman he is if he's pollinating <laughs> pollinating, uh, yeah, pollinating all the uh all the female <laughs> winterberry <laughs> hollies all around but uh, you do need to have, and this is it, often a lot of people are confused about that. And and like there's blue hollies where you need to have a pollinator, and that uh, it's something that uh, again it, it's a beautiful plant. It's something I would put along the edges of a of a landscape. I wouldn't necessarily, you know, in the background because it's pretty much green leaves, and the the actual the, the flowers are not spectacular. But the berries certainly are, and that they can get big. And, and there's a variety called Sprite that stays a little lower. That's a nicer plant that you could put in, you know, in the landscape uh, design. But a regular standard winter berry is going to get pretty tall. That you want to put that towards the back of your uh, landscape, uh, your landscape line, because you want it to show off when everything else has lost its leaves. Oh, yeah. You know, and and that's what it's going to do. And this is another one. It's absolutely used during holiday times. It's used, you know, all the way from Thanksgiving through Christmas. It's a great plant, and even we have customers that pick them up, put, plant them in their their pots in the front of the house, and then pull them and plant them in the backyard uh, after Christmas is over. You can bring, you can bring them in, and put them in a vase. I, I oh I'm yeah, you cut them absolutely. Yeah, beautiful, absolutely. They're they're great for cutting. Hypericum. All right. Who out there knows what Hypericum is? It's St. John's Wort. This is my Bible garden that I'm going to plant. St. John's Wort will absolutely be in my uh, biblical garden. Um, but it used to be that there was it was kind of boring. But now there are varieties of St. John's Wort where the berries are everything from white to red to orange to green, all different colors, and that they're good fall colors but but also they they add texture to your landscape and what's amazing is that at the wholesale florist they sell cut St. John's wort all the time so it's year round so hypericum St. John's wort is something that you should plant it it has a great berry depending on varieties like the newer varieties that have all of these different colors the flower is not as spectacular as that yellow giant buttercup flower as some of the uh, other St. John's wort, but the berries certainly are because they give you a rainbow of, of different colors. And I, they're small enough to where they can fit in the landscape. It's not something where you have to, you know, put them towards where they get real, real, real big. Smaller. Now, speaking of real, real, real big, oh, Southern Magnolia. I've talked about my Southern Magnolia, which is about 40 feet high. Uh, they get uh, that beautiful white flower that has that lemony fragrance and that it's probably the flowers or, gosh, they're at least about a foot apart or across. And that when they're pollinated, all the petals drop off and they leave what's like a pod. And uh, we have a lot of people coming. I have these cones all over my southern magnolia. It's like, yeah. no, they're not cones. It's just they're where the flower bud is left uh, after it's pollinated. What these do is that they turn uh, from a tan color to actually a brilliant pink. And then they go from pink and where they actually ripen, the seeds ripen inside 
that hello cone cone inside there and that all of these red berries open up and come out the birds go crazy over I, i'll be sitting on my porch and all i hear thump <laughs> thump thump and what's happening is that the squirrels are cutting off the seed heads and gathering them up for the fall to go and eat and <laughs> i hate squirrels but at this time when they do that, it makes me smile because they're actually working. It's not like they're eating from my bird feeder. <laughs> Double file viburnum. Viburnums are a huge uh, species of plant that have great flowers and great berries. Double file uh, fragrance as well. Double file, great white flower, and then also a red berry. Cranberry bush viburnum fantastic great foliage in the fall as well as great like that if they look like miniature cranberries in clusters and the actual flower in the spring is terrific i personally love david viburnum uh they have a blue berry very pretty very pretty lower smaller a little different also blueberry is winterthur and that that's a beauty and it, it is. And, and actually, actually, that is named for a, an area here uh, in Pennsylvania okay. for Winterthur is the garden, botanical garden close by. You should, you should visit. Get your passport out. White flower and then a cluster of a mixture of berries that ripen from like a pink to red to blue. Oh, blue muffin. Arrowwood viburnum. What color do you think those berries are? They're blue. They're blue. You get double duty on bearing plants. You get the flower and you also get those berries. So plant some burying plants in <laughs> your landscape. Help the birds out. They will eat them. Cut them like Julio does. Bring them inside. Use them to decorate. It's a great thing great to point. do. Don't don't think. You know, you know what pisses me off? Uh I like crab apples. Oh, yeah. But people have this vision of crab apples from the 1800s that where people take them and throw them around. But they're not like that anymore. They're more like berries. The birds eat them, but the crab apples are just gorgeous. So that's just an honorable mention to a tree tree, form. So go out and plant some burying plants. You won't be disappointed. 